सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्त माँ विद्विषा वह ओ शांति 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 Bye, everyone. Um, we have been looking at the Purusha Sutta. We have completed so far about fourteen mantras in the Purusha Sutta. Uh, the remaining four mantras we will look at today. Um, remaining four mantras from the first part of Purusha Sutta. ಆಸೀದಂತರಿಕ್ಷ ಶೀರ್ಷ್ಣೋಧ್ಯೌ ಸಮವರ್ತತ ಪದ್ಯಾಂ ಭೂಮಿರ್ದಿಶ್ರೋತ್ರಾತ್ ತೋಕ ಅಕಲ್ಪಯ ನಾಭ್ಯ ಆಸೀದಂತರಿಕ್ಷ ಶೀರ್ಷ್ಣೋಧ್ಯೌ ಸಮವರ್ತತ ಪದ್ಯಾಂ ಭೂಮಿರ್ದಿಶ್ರೋತ್ರಾತ್ ತೋಕಾಂ ಅಕಲ್ಪಯ um in terms of pronunciation in the first line nabhya ub is the fourth letter in the parvarga and it has to be aspirated the ub is the fourth letter in the fourth letter in the parvarga so it has to be aspirated nabhya asi dandariksham the sha uh, involves sha which is the cerebral sha so uksha okay aksha shishno dyau samavartata there is no uh, aspirated consonants there so it should be simpler padbhyam in the padbhyam the ub there are three letters in this ub ub and ya the ub is the fourth letter in the parvarga so it has to be aspirated the next word is bhumir dishah the bhu is also uh, as to be aspirated uh, because it's the fourth letter in the parvarga srotrat there is no aspirated letters the tha the tha is the second letter in the tha varga so it has to be aspirated lokam akalpayan there are no aspirated sounds so it should be okay so let's look at the sorry uh, word to word split nabhya is actually nabhya the visarga gets dropped because of sandhi here so nabhya asit antariksham the it plus a becomes the because the it becomes the because of sandhi id so it becomes id and id plus a is the so that's how you get asit antariksham but when it's split it's asit antariksham the next word is shishno shishna okay shishna has become shishno because of sandhi the visarga has become o dyau samavartata 
Padhyam, Bhumihi and Dishaha becomes Bhumir Dishaha. The Visarga becomes Ir because of Sandhi here. So Bhumihi Dishaha is the split word. Shotrat, Tata, Lokan. The Lokan, as it's pronounced as Lokam, it's Saniswara. Uh, because of Sandhi, but it's Lokan, the original form before Sandhi, Akalpayan. Okay, that's the last word. We will look at the word to word mean. So, Nabhya. So, let's look at Nabhya. Nabhya, see, Nabhi means navel. So, Nabhyaha means from the navel. Okay. From the navel, that's the sixth vibhakti or the sixth noun form of the word Nabhi. Nabhyaha. Asit. Asit comes from the root word as, that means to manifest or to exist. So, from the navel, from the navel manifested. What manifested means? Antariksham. Antariksham, simple meaning is that something which is between two things. An intermediate space or region is Antariksha. So, for uh, anything between heaven and earth, that space is called Antariksha. Anything which is in between two uh, objects is also called antariksha. So generally people would say it's the sky, it's space, it's atmosphere, uh, varieties of meanings are given. But antariksha simply means the middle region, the intermediate region. So the antariksha came from the nabhi of the purusha. So we, you know, we already looked at you know what are the different parts of the purusha uh, earlier on, the sun and the moon are the eyes and so on. So the same way from the Nabhi, the navel, uh, when we say Nabhi, so it's a navel, it is a stomach, it's a space, it's a garbha, the womb, all that actually, all that also means uh, Nabhi. Okay. So in that region, or if from that portion of the Purusha's form, the Antariksha was formed. Sirshnaha, Sirsha means head. So Sirshnaha means from the head. From his head, Dyau, Dyau is heaven. Okay, heaven is Dyau, Samavartata. So Samavartata, I will use the word proceeded. That means it came to be. So from the head of the Purusha, heaven came to be. From the middle, from his Nabhi, came the Antariksha. Padhyam. Padhyam means from the two feet. Pada means foot. Padhyam is actually dual. Uh, in Sanskrit, I had mentioned. A singular, du dual, and plural. So, this is actually the dual form of this noun. And sixth vibhakti, the uh, sixth noun form. Um, so, the meaning of that is from the feet, or so fifth form, which is fifth vibhakti, padbhya. So, from the feet came bhumihi. Bhumihi is this earth. The bhumi came from his feet. Dishaha, directions. Disha means, dik means one, one direction. Dishaha is plural. All the directions, all the different directions, east, west, north, south, all of them came from his shrotrat, from his ears. From his ears, from the Purusha's years came all the directions. 
Tatha, in this manner, Lokan, worlds actually, I should say, worlds, Akalpayan. Akalpayan means, Kalpaya means, it was formed in a proper way. Something was formed in a very proper way. Or you can even say he, ma he manifested them through his thinking, with the thought, with his will. So all this, this entire universe was formed in this manner. So from his head originated the heaven, from his nabhi originated the antariksha, the space between the heaven and earth, and from his feet came the earth. Okay. And uh, the, all the directions came from his ears. See, all these are actually very symbolic in the sense. Um, this was the way the, the rishis witnessed, visualized, or had the vision of the Lord. Okay. So I think we can go into asking questions. Uh, why are the ears mentioned? Why is, you know? So Shotra means, even though it means ear, it can also mean any form of perception from all sides. Shrutra, Shruti. So Shrutra comes from the word Shruti also. Shruti means Vedam also. So from all the sounds which emanated, all these directions came to be. So it, in a sense, these, they are witnessing the entire universe as the Purusha. The heaven above is the head of the Lord. We are at his feet. We are the Bhumi. And all the directions which we see are, are manifested because of his the Lord is always listening to us. That we also we can say. If from all directions the Lord is listening. So he's able to understand, hear every one of our prayer. That way also we can take the meaning of the Shrotra. Disha. Shrotra Disha. Okay. Go to the next mantra. Mm -hmm. Vedaha metam purusham mahantam aditya varnam tamasastu pare sarvani rupani vichitya dheeraha namani kritva bhivadanu yadaste Vedahametam Purusham Mahantam Adityavarnam Tamasastupare Sarvani Rupani Vichitya Dhiraha Namani Kritva Bhivadan Yadaste Vedahametam Purusham Mahantam Adityavarnam Tamasastupare Sarvani Rupani Vichitya Dhira Nama Nikratva Bhivadan Yadaste Vedahametam Purusham Mahantam Aditya Varnam Tamasastupare Sarvani Rupani Vichitya Dhira Nama Nikratva Bhivadan Yadaste So we will look at the pronunciation Vedahametam Purusham Mahantam. The sha here is a cerebral sha. So the tip of the tongue has to point upwards. Aditya Varnam Tamasastupari. There are no aspirated sounds. Sarvani Rupan Vichitya. No aspirated sound. Dhiraha. This dhi comes from the dha which is the fourth letter in the third varga, so it has to be aspirated. Dhiraha, namani kritva bhi. This bhi again is the bha, which is the fourth letter in the third varga, so it has to be aspirated. Yadaste. Let's look at the word-to-word -word split. First one is comprised of three words, actually. Vedaha metam. Veda, aham. Etam. Veda, aham, etam. The plus a 
becomes da. Okay, that's how you get Veda. Um plus a becomes me. So Veda Hametha. Purusham Mahantam. No change. Aditya Varnam. Tamasaha tu. Tamasaha tu. The Visarga becomes is because of Sandhi. So that's how you get Tamasas tu. But when it's split, it is Tamasaha tu. Pare. Sarvani Rupani Vichitti Dhiraha. No change. Namani Krit. Twa Kritva Abhivadan in due to Sandhi, the A becomes silent. Okay, Kritva Abhivadan Yadaste. Otherwise, also you can see you don't need to have even the Visarga because Va plus A, Va plus A becomes Va anyway. Yat, a, yat plus Aste becomes yadaste because it becomes id because of sandhi. The third letter in the third varga it becomes an yadaste. So it becomes id and id plus a becomes da. That's how you get yadaste. So we will um, look at the word to word meanings. Veda. Veda in this in this particular instance is a verb, a simple uh, present verb. Um, it can be Veda can be used for third person or first person in this case, because Aham is following that, so it is you can say I know. Okay. Um, so I have not put I because the word aham is there. Veda means I know. Aham, I. Okay. Aham Veda means I know. It's a declaration that I know. Or have learnt that we also we can say. I have learnt or I am learning. Okay, I learn. Etam. Etam means this. Purusha. So we have been describing the Purusha all along. So there's a declaration, I know this person, this Purusha. Okay. So it's the Rishi is declaring that I understand, I have come to know. Um, you know, in all the Gayatri mantras, we say, for example, Saishwaraya Vidmahe. That means we know Sai Ishwara. To know the Lord means in all his attributes, in all his glory, we come to know. This knowledge is not just reading something and understanding. It's an experiential knowledge. You have experienced who that Purusha is. So that's a declaration by the Rishi. Aham etam Purusham Veda. I know this Purusha. Okay. So who is this Purusha? Mahanta. Mahanta means he is infinite. He, you know, he spans the entire universe and beyond, which has already we have discussed. But we see is only one person, you know, one quarter. There is three quarters beyond. So that Purusha I have come to know. I know. When, when we say, I know, I am also experiencing that also can be. I am able to experience this Purusha. Aham Veda. He is Aditya Varnam. He is Aditya means sun. Varna is the color, the hue. So he is like the sun, uh, which basically means he gives us light. Aditya Varnam. Tamasaha. Tamas means darkness, ignorance, all that is tamas, like tamasoma, jyotir kami. From darkness, you take me to light. So tamas means darkness, ignorance. Tamasaha, tamasaha in the noun form, it is. it can be either the sixth or the fifth form of the noun. 
sixth vibhakti or fifth vibhakti um, both will mean okay can be taken as meaning here tamasaha of this tamas or from this tamas to but pare tamasas to pare para means the other side of the shore if there's a river flowing the shore on the other side the further show is called para so pare means he is on the other side of darkness illusion this purusha is on the other side so that's where you can see because from darkness we can't see we have to go to the other side of the darkness to see so who the one who is beyond ignorance beyond darkness that's where the purusha is okay Tamasaha to Pare. He is Aditya Varnam, but he is beyond darkness. He is on the other side of darkness. Sarvani. Sarva means all. In this case, it's an adjective of the Rupani. Sarvani means all, every, everything. Rupani. Rupa means form. Rupani is the plural of the Rupam, Rupani. Rupani, all the forms. Sarvani, Rupani. Vichitya Dheeraha. Vichitya means having manifested. Okay. Vichitya means to manifest. Vichitya means having done that. So this Purusha, having, after having manifested all these forms in this world, whatever we see, all the forms which we see. Okay. Rupan Vichitya Dheeraha. Dheeraha. Dhira means one who is firm and wise. One who is capable of facing anything from a human perspective. But this actually is a description of the Lord himself, Purusha. Okay, so he can go beyond darkness. He, you know, he's always firm, he's determined. Okay, from that sense, we are, we are he's described as Dhira. Namani Kritva. Namani is plural of Nama, names. So the Lord has Kritva having done. So not only He has created all, manifested all the forms, He has also manifested or He has done all the names also. Because this world is considered which something which has name and form. So all the names also he has created, all the forms also he has created. After having created, so you know, Kritva means after doing something, after doing, or after Vichitya, after manifesting, having manifested, having done. Abhivadana. Now I see, I have not even put the meaning. One second, I need to pause. Can you see? Can you see? You can see, I guess, yeah. One second. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so Abhivadana. Vadana means fa uh, mouth. Mouth, face, both means. Abhivadana means he calls out. Yet, having created all this, he's calling out to all of us also. Okay, so he's the one who names us. He's the one who makes the forms. And he's the one who calls Abhivadana. Yat. Yat means who? Oh, Yat in this is actually that principle. Purusha is given because in um, uh, in Vedanta, Brahman is called Tat, that. So that which calls out, as they remains. So the Lord, after having for, created all this, is calling. He remains calling everyone. Okay, so it um, Abhivadana also can be means he is always witness as a witness also he is there. Okay, so the Lord remains as a witness, calling out to us after having created all these forms and names in this universe. And that Purusha, I know. Aham Veda, Aham Etam Purusham Veda, 
who is this Purusha, who is Mahantam, Aditya Varnam, Tamas of Parastat, Sarvan, Rupan, Vichitya Dheeraha, who is the Dheera who has created all this, Namani Kritva Abhivadani, Yat, who has done this, set out all these names, and he remains as a witness, Abhivadani Yadasti. So that is the Purusha who I know. So that's a declaration by the Rishis. Um, I have an excerpt from Swami's discourse. We will just uh, read that. Each mantra has a form. It has also its own inner significance. When chanting is done with contemplation on form, it leads one to the path of self-realization. Vedic seers declared Vedaha Metam Purusham Mahantam Aditya Varnam Tamasaf Parastat. I have seen the divine being who shines with splendor of a billion suns beyond the realm of darkness. The seers and the sages transcended the darkness of ignorance and visualized the effulgence of the divine. They chanted the mantras, contemplated on the form of the divine, performed yajnas, sacrifices and rituals, and attained peace and bliss. They made use of mantra, tantra and yantra in the performance of yajnas, which ensured peace and prosperity of the people in Treta Yuga. With the help of the mantras, they quelled the Rakshasas, the demons, and established the reign of gods. So, you know, we, we looked at the mantra. In this mantra, it looks as, you know, we make the statement that God created all the forms. God gave all the names. The directions came from his ears uh, and so on. The uh, heaven is his head. Earth is his feet, and the direction soul, and the Nabi is his antariksha, and so. So there are many ways of looking at this mantra and the meaning. One is to say, okay, God has created all this. He has created all the forms, he has created all the names, and he's calling. <clears throat> so it uh, sometimes it's a matter of fact description. But what the Rishis Experience by saying this is every form which they saw, they saw it as a creation of the world, creation by God. Every name which they called out, even people, animals, uh, plants, and so on, they saw it as but his names, his forms. After all, we started out saying Sahasra Shirsha Pursa. Thousands, all the heads are his, all the feet are his. That's how we started. So the Rishis now are able to experience everything as an embodiment of God. He has created all this out of himself. So they were able to experience every single form which they saw, every single name they heard as the name of God. So through that, they declare, now we know that it's the Lord who has created this world. It's the Lord who has become all this. And we are able to experience him because everything is a splendor of sun. Everything is sun because his eyes are his sun. You know, the Chakshu Surya Ajayata. So everything which is able to see is actually able to see because of God. So the power of God is in everything which is able to perceive. So that is the experience. It is not a just, a, just a statement that you know God has created all this. No, it was an experience. If God has created something and given to us, what is the sense of reverence with which we will take? If Swami materialized and gave somebody something, how would we treat it? Because we will think, oh, God, Swami has materialized and given, so we will give it so much reverence. Uh, we will touch it if at all possible, or if you look at it with a lot of devotion. 
So that's the same level of devotion which we have to have whenever we look at this world. Every object in this world. That's the essence of this mantra. And that is how the Rishi is declared. Now I know this Purusha who has manifested and who has created all this. And that experience, Swami says, is what the sages went after. So for them, every name was a mantra. Every form was a divine form. And that is how they were able to realize their self, who they are, that they are part of this, this Purusha, Virat Purusha. And through that, they come to understand who the Lord is and they have gone past Tamasa, ignorance. So that is the meaning of this verse. Swami quotes this uh, again and again. There are hundreds of situation, places where Swami has quoted this Aditya Varnam Tamasa Parastat. Vedaham Etam Purusham. So uh, that's another uh, quote also I took. I just took two of them only. Many sages. So, somebody said Abhivadana means I pay obeisance. That is when we, it's obeisance, it is just seeking audience. Whenever you see somebody, you basically tell who you are, introduce yourself, you call out to them. You tell who you are and you find out who they are. The process of calling is Abhivadana. Okay, seeking audience, you know, that kind of meaning also. Abhivadana. Many sages and saints did penance for realizing divinity. They said, Vedaham etam purusham mahantam. We have seen God Almighty. Where did they say Him? Aditya Varnam Tamasaf Parastat. We have seen God beyond darkness of ignorance. This darkness is the identification of oneself with the body and the attachment to the senses. To realize the inner self, also, you have to transcend the body. Consciousness and attachment. To sensual desires. So I should have. I'll read again. To realize the inner self, you have to transcend the body consciousness and attachment to sensual desires. Veda teaches many things with emphasis on unity and purity. So again, Swami is saying this Aditya Varnam is to see beyond the body, beyond the attachment of senses, and we should realize the inner self. Then we will be able to make that statement, Vedaham etam purusham ahanta. We have seen God Almighty. If we are to say Swami, you know, we have seen Swami, uh, we should say we should come to this experience of being able to experience him in everything. Until we experience him in everything, we have not seen Swami. We should be able to see beyond our own body, our own mind, and see the Swami within. And once we do that, we should be able to also experience that in everything which we see, everything we observe in this world. So that's the uh, Essence of this mantra. Yes, sister. Can you go to the previous screen, please? The what is Swami meant by the the one previous screen, please? Okay. okay. So when chanting done with the contemplation on form, which form Swami is referring here, please? <laughs> Which form? Any the form of the Purusha. 
form of the purusha that mean you realize god in everything that kind of uh, realization of the form form or anything everything you see see the divinity within that that kind of thing all see, the attributes which i don't know i think i'm just looking yeah so you asking what is that form which is being referred to by swami yes okay is it you know if you look at a tree should we see the tree or should we see swami or should we the thing is sister uh, in the path of sadhana it's like yeah outside this topic maybe i should have gotten something see swami says we have to select a name a form for our sadhana once we practice that we should be able to see that form everywhere in everything and uh, he gives examples of the gopikas the gopikas saw everything as part of krishna if they saw a tree they saw krishna if they saw a peacock they saw krishna if they saw a crow they saw krishna uh, they can't, they couldn't see anything other than krishna so that's why this uh, tamil song i don't know many of you are tamil kakai chirahi nile nandalala un kariyanaram thonru so whatever they were able to see they saw krishna so that is one form they saw so we have to choose a form which we like and we should contemplate on it so much that we will only see that everywhere we see a cloud and we'll say oh that is oh that looks like swami's hair or oh, that looks like swami's walk or oh, you know something so the the rishis experience started experiencing that everywhere okay that is what is referred to you okay good thank you okay sairam sairam so we will um, we will go to the next mantra dhata purastadyamudajahara Shakra Pravidvan Pradishas Chatasra Tamevam Vidvan Amrita Iha Bhavati Nanya Pantha Ayanaya Vidyatik Dhata Purastad Yamudajahara Shakra Pravidvan Pradishas Chatasra Tamevam Vidvan Amrita Iha Bhavati Nanya Pantha Ayanaya Vidyati Dhata Purastad Yamudajahara Shakra Pravidvan Pratishas Chatasra Tamevam Vidvan Amrita Iha Bhavati Nanya Pantha Ayanaya Vidyate. Let's look at the pronunciation. Dhata, the first letter is Dha. This Dha is the fourth letter in the third varga. So it has to be aspirated. Dha, Ta. Purushas, Purush, Purasta, Dhyamuda, Jahara. There is no aspirated sounds. Chakra Pravidvan Pradeshas Chatasra. No aspirated consonants, so it should be reasonably simple. Tamevam Vidvan Amrita Iha Bhavati. This Bha is aspirated because it's the fourth letter in the Pavarga Bhavati. Nanya Pantha. This Tha is the second letter in the third Varga, so it has to be aspirated. Nanya Pantha Ayanaya Vidyate. No other consonant which is aspirated. Let's look at the Sandhi split. Dhata, no change. Purasta Yam Udajahara. All together becomes Purasta Yam Udajahara. Okay. 
Purastat and Yam, this it becomes id. That's the third letter in the Tavarga. And it, it, it becomes it, and it plus ya becomes idya. Purastadya. This um and u join to make mu. So purastadya mu daja har. So two sandhis are there. The simple words which are split are prastat yam udaja har. The next uh, the word is chakra, there is no change. Pravidvan pradisha. That is just a sandhi together, so there is no change. So pravidvan pradisha. The visarga becomes ish, as you can see here. Oh. A small mistake, wait, let me fix it. Oh, sorry, it's right. Pradisha, chatasra, okay, pradishas, is ischa, sorry. So in this case, Pravidvan Pradesha, this in plus pra, there's just a join, no changes. This Pradesha, the Visarga, is become ish, so Pradeshas Chatasra. Pradeshas Chatasra because of Sandhi. When it's split, it's Pradesha Chatasra. The next word is Tam Evam, is Tam Evam. Vidvan, so tam um plus a becomes me, no, no major change. Vidvan amrita, in plus a becomes na, when all these four are put together, becomes tam evam vidvan amrita. Okay, the visarga after ta, which is amrita, that is dropped above because of santhi. Iha bhavati. Na plus anya becomes nanya. Na plus anya becomes nanya. Pantaha. In that visarga is dropped because of sandhi. Ayanaya vidyati. Okay, so that's all the word split. We can look at the word to word meaning now. <coughs> <coughs> Data means actually it comes from the word dhatru. Dhatru means one who provides everything, he nourishes us. Is dhata. Usually Brahma, the creator, is referred to as dhata. Uh, one who provides, he has created this world. He has created all those things which will nourish us. Okay. Means one who supports also, you can say. One who provides support and sustenance. Okay. I can see just let me just put supports. Okay, and Brahma. Purastat. Pura has multiple meanings. A pura means before. Pura also means east. So that which comes from the east is purastant. Uh, so that also can mean first. East is considered first. Or something which happened before. Also purastant. Okay. Yam is whoever, you know, whoever or whom. Udajahara. Udajahara means it comes from word udahara. Okay, udajahara is past tense. Udahara means one who explains with examples. Okay, who explains, who declares. 
that is Udajahara, who declared this. Okay? So the Dhata Brahma declared first about this Purusha, Yam. So Brahma apparently, when he created the world, he had declared about this Purusha. Dhata Purasta Yam Udajahara. Okay. Shakraha. Shakraha means one who is very powerful. But generally, Shakraha is referred, used to refer to Indra, Devendra, the lord of, the king of all the gods. Okay. You can also say the mind is also Shakraha. It's very powerful because it's a lord of all the Indriyas. Okay. Shakraha. Pravidvan. Vidwan means one who, who is accomplished, who is someone who knows, who is a scholar. Vidwan. Who is learned. Okay. Pravidwan means he knows in, in every way possible. Completely knows. So apparently this Chakraha, Indra knows this Purusha very well. <coughs> okay. Chakra Pravidwan, Pradishaha. So Pradishaha means in all directions. Pravidvan, Pradishaha, Chatasraha. Chatasraha means four. Okay, four directions you can say. Pradishaha means all directions. So this Chakra knows him from all directions in all different ways. Okay. Tam, him. So the Brahma declared about him in the first place. The Shakra Hindra knows him. Whoever is powerful knows him from all directions, in all ways, in all manner possible. Him. Evam alone. It can also mean whatever we know in this world, actually it's him alone, God, that Purusha alone. Okay. Evam. Vidwan. Knower, one who knows only him. Okay. So whoever knows this, okay. Because we said, yeah, Amrita means immortality. Amrita is a state of immortality. Iha here in this world, Bhavati becomes. So one who knows this. Purusha, who was about whom Brahma declared in the first place, and whom the Indra knows in all ways, in all manner possible, one becomes immortal here itself. Okay. Na anyaha, no other. Na means no. Anyaha means other. For him. No for him, no, no other. Nanya. Panthaha. Panthi means, Pantha means uh, path, marga. Karma marga, bhakti marga, we say, or the path. Panthaha, paths. Okay. Ayanaya. Ayana means to move, you know, we'll say Uttarayana, Ramayana. Ayana is the movement from stage to stage. Ayanaya means for the path. It's a fourth form, fourth vibhakti of the word ayana, ayanaya. Or to purusha also. Okay, the way forward to the purusha. Vidyate becomes or exists also, I would just put. Okay. So what, so this purusha, Okay, knowing that Purusha is the only way possible. Okay, that is the only way possible. No other way exists to that Lord. That's why every Gayatri, we say Vidmahe, Vidmahe comes. One, we have to come to know that, the Lord. That's why you can see Vidwan, Pravidwan. The knowing of this, the Lord is the only way to attain Him. That's why in the Vedas, Brahma with Brahma Iva Bhavati. One who knows the Brahman becomes Brahman. So knowing is the way to get to that point. 
So you can see in this mantra, vidya has been used in multiple places. Pravidvan, vidvan, and vidyate. By knowing something, it comes into existence. So that kind of a meaning. Okay, we will uh, get read a discourse excerpt of Swami. Very nicely Swami has put. Shastri spoke in detail of the importance of Uttara in a day. When the sun starts northward, the day has an outer and an inner significance. The inner having greater value for aspirants for spiritual progress. I do not attach much value to the outer meaning the sun taking a northward direction from today. The six months from now on being holier than the six that ended today. And therefore, as Shastri said, <coughs> the Uttarayana being better suited for spiritual practices. One's life must be a perpetual spiritual practice. And any day is a good day for starting spiritual practices, whether it falls in the southward or northward movement of sun. One need not wait for the sun to turn north. The months and sun's passage toward the north or south are all related to the subjective world, Prakriti. So they have only relative value. Uttarayana is a quality of the Nayana, the I. It's a matter of attitude, a point of view. It is not an Ayana, a solstice point. When you sight, when your sight is on Brahman, it is Uttarayana northward. When it is on the objective world, it is Dakshinayana, southward. When you have a developed, excellent quality, every day is Uttarayana, whatever the almanac may say. When you have a fever, the tongue will be bitter. When you are healthy, you know all tastes. The bitter tongue is the Dakshinayana, the sweet tongue is the Uttarayana. To associate, to associate this with the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn is just a convention. The astronomical Uttarayana comes to you whether you strive for it or not. It is part of the law of nature. But for the real Uttarayana, you must make efforts, tremendous efforts. Know that there are only two entities, the substance and the shadow. Or rather, only one and its appearance produced by ignorance. The Atma and the Anatma. The seer and the seen. The rope and the snake. When this knowledge becomes part of the mental maker, it liberates you from delusion and you see Kailas, Shiva's mountain abode, at the end of the northward journey. Like Kailash, that stage is all light, all white. The path is straight and hard, but the goal is glorious. It is nothing less than illumination. It is when people forget this goal that the avatar comes to save them. The avatar comes where there is yet a remnant of good men, yet a trace of righteousness, dharma. For what is the use of a doctor when the patient has collapsed? When a large number of good men are afflicted while the fear of the survival of goodness the Lord incarnates to feed their drooping spirits and revive faith and courage. Paritranaya sadhunam in the Gita does not mean 
the protection of the wise aspirants or ascetics it means the protection of all who have good sadhu virtues good virtues might be found even in animals and insects and worms the lord will guard and guide even such he comes to promote dharma and virtue is the foundation of dharma the worldly outlook will deceive you and land you in grief you do not know which articles will satisfy your inner cravings and you try to possess whatever attracts your eye when you crave the thought of the lord and the company of the godly then you are in uttarayan Bhishma was in that mood. He prayed, "From this transient world of decay, lead me to the everlasting world of bliss." Asatoma sadgamaya, give me the effulgence of Thy grace and illumine my soul with truth. Tamasoma jyotir gamaya, save me from the torture of birth and death and destroy the cravings of mind, which produce the seeds of birth. and lead me to immortality mrityorma amritam gamaya that prayer and that yearning of bhishma gave him the vision of krishna when he passed away that was the real uttarayana for him so as you can see swami so when every thought is of the lord every company is of the godly which is what we discussed then you experience the divine and that so bishma swami is giving and th- that's a real ayana that's the real moment there's no other way to reach the lord okay so in that sense i thought it will be a good uh, excerpt we'll go to the next mantra this is the last mantra in the uh, first part of purusha suktam <coughs> the first part of the purusha suksham is the one which is present in all the vedas there are six other mantras which we will continue learning uh, which is part of the purusha sukta we chant but uh, this is the final mantra in the uh, the purusha sukta proper so we'll look at this mantra yajnena yajnamaya janta devaha tani dharmani prathaman nyasam देह नाक महिमान सचंते यूर्वे साध्या सन्ति देवा यज्ञेन यज्ञमय जंत देवा तानि धर्मानि प्रतमान्यासन देह नाक महिमान सचंते यत्र पूर्वे साध्या सन्ति देवा यज्ञमयजंतमाशन and nya as different people pronounce it is some people pronounce it ya ug nya yagnya which is not correct so you should say yagnya ya ja nya some people even say yagya ya ug and ya which is also not correct so pay attention to that because of habit you know we may pronounce it in incorrectly so ya ja nya ya nya so if you can see in the english transcription ya ej ja and nya ya nya so pay attention to that ajnana yajya maya janta deva tani dharmani dha dha is the fourth letter in the ta varga so it has to be aspirated dharmani pratha This is tha is the second letter in the tha varga, so it has to be aspirated. So prathaman yasan teha naakam mahimana sachante. No change. Yatra purve sadhya. This ud 
is the fourth letter in the third verb, so it has to be aspirated. Sadhya Santi. Okay, Sadhya Santi Veda Deva. Let's look at the word to word split. Yajna no change. Yajnam, Yajnam plus Ayajanta becomes um plus becomes ma yajna maya janta tani dha uh, dharma no change pratama pratramani asan this ni plus a becomes niya okay ni e plus a always become niya um ni plus a becomes niya okay that's how you get pratama nyasan so this e plus a becoming ya. Teha nakam mahimana sachante no meeting uh, change. But sometimes in some let, uh, books you will see is kavastan is also. That's also because of santi. Yatra purve sadhya santi. This sadhya, this visarga becomes is because of santi. So sadhya. Santi, so you can sadhya santi deva. Okay, now do you look at the word to word meaning? Yajnana, yajna is the simple verb, uh, sorry, noun. Yajnana is the third form, okay, third vibhakti. So by or through yajna, yajnana. Yajnam, this is a second vibhakti object form of yajna. Yajnam. Ayajanta. Ayajanta is uh, past tense of the word yaj, okay, and uh, past word plural, third person plural, okay. In Sanskrit, it's called Prathama Purusha, Bhavachana. So it's plural of the third person. Devaha, so Devaha gods. Ayajanta, the, the gods worshipped. Devaha Ayajanta. Okay. What, how, how did they worship? Yaj, de, Devaha Ajayan, Ayajanta. Yajnana. Through Yajna, Yajnam worship. Okay, so what they did? Devaha yajnena yajnamaya janta. So you can use the word, the yaj has happened in three, three words. Yajna means to generally to sacrifice, you know, offer something. Through the offering, they worship by worshipped by offering. Okay, that was the meaning. So everything in life, all worship is actually offering something. So gods offered something, and through that something they worshipped the Lord. Yajnana yajnam ayajanta deva. Okay. So if you go back and look at look at the earlier part of Purushottam, we say the gods. You know whether you know they said different forms of gods using the Purusha aspects of Purusha. They created this world. So they offered this everything of the Lord for the benefit of everyone and that's the we have all this creation which we are able which is able to sustain us and help us in our own life so the so devas have set the example of offering everything for the benefit of humanity and the world and through that they worship the Lord they worship the Purusha through this process okay Yajnyena Yajnyamaya Janta Devaha. Tani, these, you know, these actions, this Yajnyas which they performed, Dharmani, Dharmani means all the Dharmas. You can say laws also if you want, all the righteous practices you can say. But Dharma, Dharma means that which sustains everything. Dharmani, Prathamani. Pratama means first, the primary, the most important. 
dharmani pratamani the pratamani the, the most important most primary dharmas okay asan came to exist so through this process of yajna all the dharmas came to be were pro created okay they came to exist tani dharmani pratamani asan so that worship itself has become dharma that way also we can take so the devas already set the example of how to worship the lord through offering everything for the benefit of the world through that this all the good things in the world dharmas have come into exist dhani dharmani pratamani asan te te means those is plural saha tau te te is plural ha indeed te ha na kam okay na kam is generally translated as heaven na kam uh ka means pain ka means pain suffering akha means no pain okay okay na kam sorry ka is happiness i'm sorry ka is happiness akha means pain suffering na akha means no unhappiness ka is happiness akha is unhappiness or pain na akha means no unhappiness no pain so that's the way heaven is that state when we don't have pain that state is called heaven so na akha you know i just split the words as letters etymologically so ka happiness akha is pain unhappiness na akha means there where there is no pain so heaven is a place where there is no pain nakam mahimanah mahimanah means those who possess mahima you know they are able to accomplish things they are glorious ones so mahimanah means the glorious ones okay sachante sachante means they do please people or make people happy they help they aid so these glorious ones okay mahana ha they they help uh, aid yeah the shark costume you know with the hoodie they help and aid okay in this manner by setting this example okay mahimana ha sachante yatra yatra means where okay where purve purve i was purve is something like pura before earlier purve sadhya see the perfect ones we just in swami discourse we looked at sadhu swami mentioned about sadhus people who are good the sadhu sa the good nature swami says in the god sadhu naam uh paritranaya sadhuna to protect the sadhus so the good good qualities of us meritorious ones so all that whoever has that is sadhya sadhya perfect ones santi remain exist deva gods okay so we are in the earlier place good people and gods resided remained where did they remain they remained in heaven what is heaven heaven is a place where there is no unhappiness how did they remain in that state of unhappiness through yajnena yajnam ayajanta by worshiping the lord through offering and sacrifice so this that is how this mantra comes to an end and brother kumar has raised his hand yes brother kumar 
uh, Sai Ram brother. The word uh, Yatra, is it the same with a line? If I put a line, it becomes Yatra is the same or is it the same meaning there? So Yatra is the meaning is different, brother. Yatra. Yes. Uh, in this case, Yatra means where? Where, not in sense of question, but in the question of that which, or that the place where something okay the place where in the early the earlier gods and sadhus resided so yatra in this case but yatra is there where you go there that yat is movement traveling pilgrimage so that's so the meaning is slightly different brother okay Thank I hope. But the same way you write the word for that also, or is it? Yeah, uh, so if, if you put a staff next to the ya, it becomes yeah. ya. Oh, yatra. okay. Got it. Tra. Got it. Thank you. Then tra also, you had to put another one. So that becomes yatra. Okay. Got it. Thank you. We'll uh, read an excerpt of Swami. We cannot think without words. Words are essential material for thought. When the individual drops the body, the words enter the mind. The mind enters the life force, prana, and the life force merges in the atma. The embodied soul, jivatma, when it liberates itself, rushes to the region of the solar principle, the Surya Loka. From there it reaches the region of Brahma, the Brahma Loka. Having reached that region, the individualized Atma has no more concern with nature, Prakriti. It will exist there till the end of time. It will experience boundless delight. It will have all powers except the powers of creation. The authority to rule over the cosmos is exclusive to God. God is free from desires and all varieties desires of all varieties. One's duty is but to offer him love and to worship him through love. This raises one to the highest status among beings. Those who are unaware of this status or are incapable of discharging their responsibilities belong to other categories. They also offer and worship, they also engage themselves in beneficial activity, but they crave for the fruits they hope to gain. They perform acts motivated by a desire to benefit from the results that emerges therefrom. We have helped the helpless, so our path will be smooth and safe. We have uplifted the downtrodden, so we can avoid troubles on our road. We have we see ourselves in singing the glories, Lord's glory in chorus, so we are sure of heaven. These are the calculations of people of this nature who engage themselves in good acts. So this is from Satisaivani chapter 8. Um, so I, why I put this is, you know, it's all about the journey to a state. So if you read the first one, so when we die, you know what happens is described and we will go towards the Brahma Loka. So ultimately whether we are alive or dead, that journey is to that ultimate state. Okay. So if we have to reach the Lord, that's the INN. No other path exists for this journey. How yajnyena yajnya maya deva. So that means we have to offer everything to the Lord. But when we get to that point, having reached that region, the individual Atma has no concern of nature. It will exist till the end of time. It will experience boundless delight. Okay. It will have all the powers except the powers of creation. So as you can see, Swami has already mentioned in the, in the mantra, which is Mahantaha, Sadhya, Devaha, 
the gods all reside in that state of nakam where there is no point there is no suffering that's the highest status state okay those who are unaware of this this status you know swami says we have to go to that so they also offer others also offer worship others also pray but the thing is they they are still their eyes their vision is towards the world whatever experience in this world is then it will not be considered yajna yajna is something which is offered without any by any thought or desire okay so the purusha so the entire purusha suktam is about who, understanding who the purusha is and knowing that purusha is the ultimate goal the purusha is the one who, who has created this entire universe he has created a sentry universe as parts of himself and all what we created the names the forms everything is his and by contemplating on this and reminding ourselves on this the rishis we will also can experience what the rishis experientially realized and declared that they have known the lord who is beyond ignorance beyond this body beyond all desires beyond this identification with the body and the mind and the body everything has to be merged into the lord and through that process we will travel to the surya loka and brahma loka as swami says that is the path that's ayana so there is no other path which exists that is the place that's the stage in which all the great sadhya and the mahantas have all reside all they will reside um that is the original state so that is how purushottam comes to an end and it is a reminder to us so chanting and contemplating and studying the meaning of purusha sukta is to realize one day what the goal of life is and who is the goal because he is the source swami always says we have to go back to the source from where we came and purusha is the source and to purusha we return and uh, so purusha suktam is uh, that's why purusha suktam is held very uh, auspicious to read study chant uh, by just chanting you know slowly we will learn and be able to experience this and uh, with swami's grace we will do so so this is the first part of purusha sukta which i have completed today there is there's a second part of few mantras which we will cover in the next couple of weeks um with those words i will stop here saira if um, there are no questions saira kalyani saira mango um you said that uh, yaj as a for ayajanta also comes from yaj right yes it's a past it's a past tense Okay. Yes. And so yaj means like sacrifice but also worship? Yes. Worship through sacrifice, worship through offering, worship worship by giving. Okay. And um and then the sachante is that referring to the mahima or like the the good people? Sachante, sachante? Yes. Yeah, the sa chat the chat means to help aid that's the meaning so sachante means who help you well uh, aid they also take joy in observing something that's also sachante again there's a plural uh, verb so, Pres- uh, okay. so it's a verb so it's, a, it's describing what the mahima is do exactly yeah. exactly are doing yes okay because they set they are ex, they are uh, helping people by setting an example uh, and things like that okay so it's saying that in previously the, all these devas and um good people they were able to live without pain because they did yagna all the time yes okay. i think swami in uh, which vahini I think we 
I think, oh, no, it's, it was a, Swami talks in the previous class, you know, we talked about uh, the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas and so on. And Swami says, originally everyone was a Brahmana. Oh, yes. Mm. But slowly everyone lost certain good qualities and deteriorated. Mm. So it is similar to that. Okay. So when God created everyone was pure, just like a baby is pure. Mm. It doesn't have any evil thoughts, nothing. Mm. It's very innocent, but it deteriorates as it grows. So the original state, everyone is, everything is pure, even in the creation. So we, we, are, we are trying to go back to the original state. Okay. We are all clean. We get dirty. We have to have shit. We are clean ourselves and become pure again. You know, that kind of a meaning. Mm. And in the previous mantra, um, the, so it says Pradesha and then it says Chatasraha. So yes. why is it so for saying all directions and then saying four? Is See, it... Pradeshaha, um, Pradeshaha means in all manner. You know, it's there's no real good translation for pra in all in all all around, you know, type of thing. Mm -hmm. In every direction, type of meaning is comes from pra, pradesha, every direction. Chatastraha means four. Mm -hmm. Um, because the way I saw it, you know. The top is already covered, the down is covered mm -hmm. uh, in all the dishes uh, all around. Mm -hmm. And, and Chatasra, I think it's four. Um, that's the way I understood. But the Vedas also four, you know. So there are many meanings which can come from that. I think mm -hmm. the essence is uh, uh, much more, uh, I think, the essence. That's a prayer is not a number. Mm -hmm. Uh, praise in all manner, you know, uh, in every way. Uh, that's the meaning I would give. Oh. But I, for lack of a better way of translating, I just put, I come, I refer to other texts, and mm -hmm. that's how they have translated. So I just used it. Okay. Uh, it's like prakasham. You know, if you say prakasham, mm -hmm. the light is emerges from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. How in which direction? You know, in all directions. You know, I don't know how to put it. Yeah. So prakriti, this entire prakriti is nature. Mm -hmm. um, in every ma in different ways, it got manifested. So that's prakriti. So the word pra is not number. Yeah. It just uh, shows you uh, a, a projection of something in many different ways. Right. So, yeah, that's why I was wondering why they needed to say the four after. But you're saying the four could also mean the Vedas, or it could. Yes, yeah. You know, four, four has its own meaning by itself, also, you know. Yeah. Um, that sense, you know, I, I, I couldn't find anything other than that. So I'll just leave it at that. Oh, okay. I just leave the meaning, okay. Yeah. And, uh, is there any reason why, because Swami in his uh, quotations he says tamasaparastat, but here says tamastupare? So, see, actually, when we read the next six lines, both mean the same thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, there is another mantra which comes with tamasaparastat, which we will read in the following uh, section. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Uncle. You're welcome. Yes, Brother Kumar. Uh, yes, um, I I think there was one of the questions I was about to ask, but uh, Sister Kalyani asked, so I'm okay with that. You know, because the directions and I the know. score, okay. I was a little confused there. Why and okay. And then the last one is uh, from one of his uh, uh, discourses. Uh, talked about uh, Surya Loka, right? Yes. Uh, on in his uh, from him, what does he? I mean, I know I know we cannot go into his uh, thought process and explain what Surya Loka means. But what does what did he what he's trying to say in that in this particular uh, perspective? I'm not you know there could be so many variations you can talk yes. about, right? But in this perspective, I'm only interested in this because it's very interesting. The last part of his discourse, what I mean, what you were reading through. Okay, brother. Okay. See, the thing is, um, when we die, we are supposed to go to either the Surya Loka or Chandra Loka. Uh, when we go to Chandra Loka, we come back and are born again. 
the chandra loka is also considered pitru loka so we can ask what is why what is chandra and what's the surya mean chandra is nothing but the mind if the mind is still active there it has uh, vasanas it has uh, you know residues of experiences which it still seeks to experience once again desires in the seed form are existing the mind is still full so then what happens people go to a stage where they are still dwelling in the mind which is chandra loka and they will have to come back and be born again <clears throat> whereas if you go towards the sun sun is supposed to be buddhi so buddhi has already discriminated and decided this world is of no reality the mind is fully cleansed so the ex, the mind the person becomes amanaskaha means amanaskaha means one who is without mind when someone reaches that state the person when they die they go to surya loka so it's the same thing in this world also if uh, if the mind is completely put to rest mind is negated no thoughts no desires one will exist in the surya loka that is everything will be very objective everything will be done with buddhi buddhi is nothing but a reflection of atman so one would be act, engaged in very godly actions and that is surya loka so this is uh, so this, if you read the satsai vani there are a couple of many other places also swami has talked about this also described in in the bhagavad gita by krishna um so that is the surya loka surya means where there's no darkness there's no waxing and waning it's always light all times whereas if one is in the moon the moon has waxing and waning it will become uh, uh, full and then it will again dwindle um so it is not an eternal light whereas in the sun it is eternally bright eternally light that is surya loka and that is uh, looking at the lord all times will give us light when we are in the moon the mind is active we we may temporarily be knowing things and then we again go back to darkness so these are if uh, you know i don't know uh, explained with uh, in a poetic way by rishis and in the gita and these principles are also given these names i hope that answers your question that's to the extent of best ability which i am able to okay so yes santi sakwanti yes uh, when you are uh, being a sadhana sadhakas you should not have any goal i don't understand auntie when you are praying and when you are doing all the sadhanas i know we do with love but uh, can can't we have a goal to that means to uh, receive no birth no death status is that wrong that desire is wrong so i think auntie uh, the goal will determine what we what we receive i don't think a, no action is without a goal okay but the goal has to be the the permanent the goal is the permanent the achievement yeah if we seek something which is temporary oh. then we have to have another goal okay once the temporary thing goes away yeah it is anitya in this uh, but you can have a goal which is permanent which is purusha yeah, who is always yeah. there then uh, that goal will uh, will reach that okay but the goal is not necessarily desire desire is a mental thing goal is a goal okay nature of the buddhi yeah you nature say this buddhi okay okay so i hope thank you who I can help. can he explain like this come say it swami ka bye <laughs> um i think we'll stop here
Uh, Brother Kumar has again asked about what does Abhivadana means? Abhivadana means one who faces something, one who calls something. There are multiple meanings. It's like, you know, something like someone is on the face, you know, in your face uh, type of thing. You know, someone is in your face means they are in front of you all the time, uh, telling you things, standing in front of you, distracting you. Uh, in many ways you can say. So that's Abhi Vadana. Abhi means that which is fresh, new. Vadana means face, uh, mouth also. So you know that sense, they are always there in front of you. Always a witness. Uh, yata aste, yata aste. So who is, God is always staring at us. God is in front of us. So all that can be meant by Abhi Vadana. But uh, so that's why generally you know, somebody put Abhivadaya, you know, when you go to somebody, you are supposed to, these Brahmins have a tradition when somebody, you reach uh, a great person, you explain, you know, what is your gotra, what is your sutra, you know, pravara gotra, you know, you explain who you are and seek audience. So that is the Abhivadana. Audience also is okay. Uh, that's also another meaning. So Uncle, in this look, it's saying that God has created all this, all the names and forms, and he's waiting to seek our audience? Exactly. He's just waiting. As Swami says, the sun waits outside your window and waits for you to open and look at him. He's there, waiting, calling. That's God. Open your hearts and I am there, you know, as God says. You know, some of these words, you know, very difficult to translate, you know, you can only talk and talk about them. I hope uh, by reading and thinking and chanting, you will, uh, Swami will teach us and explain and give us the experience. Okay, it's 34, so I will stop here and we'll close with Samastha Loka and we'll meet next week again, Saira. Om Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavant Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavant Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavant Om Shanti 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 Sairam Yuru